A moving average, also called the rolling average or running average, is an average based on subsets of data at given intervals. A moving average is when you keep the time period of the average the same but keeps moving as new data is added. Moving average calculations is a common way of smoothing data to reduce the effects of random short-term fluctuations. The larger the interval used to calculate a moving average, the more smoothing that occurs since more data points are included in each calculated average. Simple moving average SMA is the average of the data points in the given duration. To calculate a moving average, you can use a simple formula based on the average function with the relative references. We have monthly sales data in column B. Calculate the three month moving average. Since we are calculating a three point simple moving average, leave the first two cells for the first two months empty and start using the formula from the third month. Use this formula. Use the average function with a relative reference set up for each specific interval. Three month simple moving average is calculated by passing a range that includes the current month and the two previous months. Copy the formula down. The formula calculates a three month moving average based on the sales value for the current month and the two previous months. Since we used relative reference, the range provided to average is changed to include the required values B4 to B6. In the next cell, it is B5 to B7 and so on. Six month simple moving average is calculated by passing a range that includes the current month and the five previous months b3 to b8 and so on. Create a chart to see a visual representation of the moving averages. Select the data that you want to include it in the chart. For example, select dates, sales 3 and 6 month averages. On the insert tab in the charts group, click on the insert line icon and choose the first chart type 2D line. The blue line is the monthly sales, orange line 3 month average and gray line is 6 month average. The chart clearly shows that as the number of points included in the range pass to average function increases, the smoothing increases meaning less fluctuations. If you start the formulas in the first row of the table, the first few formulas won't have enough data to calculate a complete average because the range will extend above the first row of data. For example, for three month average, the formula includes B1 and B2. This may or may not be an issue depending on the structure of the worksheet and whether it's important that all averages are based on the same number of values. The average function will automatically ignore text values and empty cells, so it will continue to calculate an average with fewer values. If it is important that the average be calculated only if it has sufficient data, you can use an if statement to indicate insufficient data. Use this formula. The row function returns the row number of the reference passed. Current row number minus the row number of the first data point in the range plus one gives the relative row number in the range. If it is less than the number of data points passed to the average function, returns NA, else calculate the simple moving average. As the number of data points in the range increase, you will run out of rows above the data and won't be able to enter the required range. For example, for six month average for data point one, there are only two rows above. A more flexible way to calculate a simple moving average is with the offset function. Create a dynamic range. This is the general formula where n is the number of data points, here it is months, to be included in the average. Enter the number of months in E5. Use this formula to find the moving average for variable periods. Use offset to return a range which is passed into the average function. Starting at cell B3, offset constructs a range that extends back to previous rows. This is accomplished by using a height equal to negative n. This formula will also have the problem of insufficient data in the first few rows depending on how many periods are given in E5. 
the offset formula used in this example returns b1 to b3. The average is calculated correctly as average function ignores text values and blank cells. As periods increase, offset will continue to create a range that extends above the start of the data running into the top of the worksheet and returning a pound or ref error. Change the number of months to 6. Pound ref error is returned for first 3 months. To solve this problem, you can use the min function to restrict the height passed into offset function. Use this formula. The first value in the min function is the relative row number in the range. The second value is the number of months. When the relative row number is less than number of months, min returns the relative row number to offset for height. When the row number is greater than number of months, min returns number of months. When number of months is 6, in the first row in the range, the relative row number is 1, which is less than 6, so 1 is returned. From 6th row, 6 is returned as number of months and is less than relative row number. Use this formula to calculate the average. Use the min function to pass the height to offset function. Relative row number is 1, which is less than number of months, 6, so min returns 1. Since height is 1 only, B3 is passed to average, no reference errors are returned. If you want the average to be calculated only if there is sufficient data, use the if statement. Use this formula. The advantage of using dynamic arrays is that you can change the number of months easily. Change the number of months to 12. Moving average is calculated for 12 months. To download practice excel file, please click on the link in the description. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel.